<laughs> All right, what's up? How's everything going? My name is David, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial series developing our very own game engine using C++ and OpenGL. So uh, before we begin and get into that, um, I just kind of want to go over exactly what we'll what the um, what we're going to be working towards. So in the future, so this is 22 episodes into the series, we're going to have our very own video game that we're going to be playing. This one particularly is a RPG that I've been creating. So in an RPG, you can move around, collide with different objects, and um, even interact with them. So you can spawn text boxes, you can spawn more different events and such. Uh, especially in the future, we'll be developing those. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at. You can also go into a house, as I just showed you there. But that's all I have for that today. Uh, but however, I mean, that's a, that's a long ways away. It's, uh, obviously, you can't develop something like that in a day. Well, I mean, maybe on like Unity or something like that, you can. But uh, using just your bare bones C++ and uh, OpenGL, it's going to be a bit more difficult to get across, but a lot more fun process. This is actually what we're going to be developing today. It's this little window here. So we're going to be making a window application. So what you can do with a window is you can move it around, minimize it, maximize it, and close it out. So I'm going to show you the code to get there. But before we begin, we got to download a few things. So let's go ahead and make sure you have the latest version of Visual Studios installed on your machine. I'm using Community 2022, and that's what I'll be showcasing this entire tutorial under. Uh, next thing we'll need is some binary files. So we're going to be using the GFW window application, as I said, uh, for as I showed you before, the, what our window is going to be looking like. Um, so go ahead and download that. And then we also are going to need GLAD. So depending on what uh, year your machine is, it could vary the version of OpenGL that you'll be using. Uh, but however, it'd be very, very unlikely that um, with just, uh, I mean, no one's using a computer that was made in like 2000 or 2005. But if you are, for some reason, you're, you have like, I don't know, Windows 95 still in, installed in your machine, it might be worth checking to see what version of OpenGL um, your computer could be using. So I would go ahead and look up GLView and get that figured out uh, by yourself. Um, so go ahead, download that, click Generate. It should come up with um, this file here. Click Glad Zip to download it, and then you'll have it in your downloads. Uh, but before we do that, I kind of want to go to my GitHub, or I want to explain exactly uh, how you can access like the code for these tutorials. So they're all going to be located at my GitHub in the description below. Um, it's going to look like something like this. It's in under the releases tab for my um, my project, the OpenGL RPG tutorial. And if you are stuck or you just want to cheat and get ahead of these coding tutorials, you can go ahead and download the source code. Each episode source code is located as a release. So you'll be able to figure out um, exactly where you went wrong or just look at the code in general before you start. So let's uh, let's get right into it. Let's start up our Visual Studios here and create a new project, empty project, start from scratch, and we'll call this Game Engine. So your starting, pro your starting project should look something like this. Hold on, let me actually, let me hide my uh, video capture. There we go. I'm going to hide my camera just so you can see the code uh, in full. We're going to add our very first item here. It's going to be a C++ file. We're going to call it main.cpp. CPP. Yeah, that's right. All right. And we are going to start off with the obligatory hello world. So let's go ahead and include IO stream here, int main turn zero and let's print out 
our Hello World just to see that Visual Studios is running correctly and that uh, everything is downloaded correctly on our machines. There we go. Run the Windows debugger. Mine is currently off on the other screen over there. But if, it, if you have a debug console that comes up and says Hello World, then everything is installed correctly and we can begin on to the next step which is quite a tedious one, but we will be unpacking our GLFW and CLAD files that we downloaded. So go ahead and extract all, bring that over, and let's browse to where we created our Visual Studios project. So in my case, dwads slash source repos and game engine. And let's go ahead and create a new folder here. And we're gonna call this folder third party. So inside of this third party folder is just going to be going all of our uh, code that we didn't write. So for instance, GLFW and GLAD is going to sit in there. And GLFW has quite a bit of files to it. Uh, not all of them are necessary, so we can actually go ahead and clean up some of these. Delete all the um, different versions of GLFW that they have. All we really need is the latest version, so we'll just keep that and just call it lib. And we're also going to need to move this DLL file into our main folder here. So let's go ahead, move it in here. And let's also extract glad into this project file as well. So extract all, move this over here, and let's go ahead and browse to our third party folder. Actually, from what I remember, um, this extracting, Gold. Uh, we're going to actually have to create our own file uh, to begin with to to place all the um, all the stuff that Glad has because it doesn't create a folder for it. Um, but just like um, GLFW, we're going to have to move the one of the files over into our main project. So let's move Glad.c into Game Engine. And we will actually have to make Visual Studios be aware of this file since it is a C file. Um, DLLs and uh, other library files are kind of dealt with in a different way. So we won't have to worry about those. But we can actually go ahead and delete the source file here now. And we can even rename this to just GLFW uh, just to make things a bit easier on ourselves. But I guess one thing to point out too is if you go to the lib file here, there's three different types of libs or libraries uh, inside of this GLFW um, like package. We are not going to be using these last two here. So GLFW3 underscore MT and DLL, uh, they're just kind of add-ons. Not entirely sure what their uses are, but we only use this, uh, this one up here. So we'll make sure I mean, you can go ahead and delete these two if you if you really care. I'm going to leave it open just in case something changes in the future uh, for my project. But you can do whatever with with it whatever you want. So let's go ahead and add that uh, glad.c file into our project and start linking up our includes and our libraries. So to do that, let's go to C slash C plus plus edit here at additional include directories and go navigate to our third party clad include folder. And we can actually add a neat little macro here. So it's called money sign solution dir. And what that does is it navigates or it, it's pretty much just a text copy of this path here. So if you do move your project file to a different location, you can actually um, shortcut solution dir. So like uh, say you want to move your project to a different place, uh, you won't have to actually deal with manually setting up uh, your includes and libraries again, um, which can be a pretty frustrating task if you are not aware that's how that works. So solution dir fixes that sort of problem. So uh, make sure you apply that as well, but it's not entirely necessary. The next thing that we'll be doing is uh, additional library directories. Let's go ahead and link our libraries together. 
So go to third party, glfw lib, find that out, replace this with solution dir, click apply, because why not save? And last thing we'll need to do is make aware of the library that we're going to be using from that folder, which is glfw w3.lib. Click apply and everything should be working correctly. But just to make sure, let's go ahead and include our newly included folders. So one is under glad slash glad.h. And the other is in glfw, glfw3.h. Now, an important thing to note, um, just based off of how glfw3 works, or glfw works, is it automatically includes its own version of OpenGL if you do not define it. So you have to make sure, since we're defining it with glad up here, you have to make sure glad is included before uh, glfw is. Otherwise, you're gonna get an error and wonder what is uh, what is going on with that. Um, the glad is glad is important too. I'm not sure if I went over this, um, just because uh, we need to make sure that we're using the proper version and of OpenGL and our graphic. We're interacting with our graphics card using that proper version, and it links up the functions correctly or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but I think that's what GLAD does. And then GLFW is just the window program or the API for the, uh, the window. So let's go ahead and, well, I guess I didn't run it, did I? Let's go ahead and run this just to make sure everything's included correctly. And as you can see, Hello World came up, so that means everything's working. And let's start by initting some stuff. So we're going to do an if statement. So if uh, glfw fails to init, we want to be able to catch that. And once we do, we can make a nasty little little error in C error here that says uh, glfw failed to init. And then we'll just do an explanation point because we want it to be read loudly. And return out of our our program with a one saying that signifying that we we errored out. Next thing that we'll need to do is uh, input the OpenGL version that we're going to be using to glfw. So to do that we use a function called window hint. So we're giving a hint to the window here of what OpenGL vision version we're going to be running under. So that version for most machines is 4.6 as uh, stated when we downloaded GLAD. But to put 4.6, you gotta do some, some weird uh, GLFW stuff. I don't even know how to describe it. You have to set version, major, and minor. So the version is four, or sorry, the version major is four, and the version minor, we're going with 4.6 is 6. So that's how you input OpenGL version 4.6 into GLFW. The next thing we'll be doing is another window hint, and that is to um, say that we will not be using any of the deprecated functions for OpenGL. So to do that, we'll do OGLFW OpenGL profile, if I can spell, uh, profile here and we're going to be using the core profile. So some of the deprecated functions that we will not be going over uh, uh, include like fixed function pipelines. Um, I think some of like the, just like older shader stuff that um, no one really uses and haven't really been touched since like the 90s. So they're kind of useless on their own. Um, so we're not gonna be using it and we wanna make sure that they're just not used in general as they're pretty slow and can be pretty costly to performance. So let's now create our window. So we'll be using the function glfw create window here. And let's set up our aspect ratio. So we'll do 800 by 600 as that's the standard uh, desktop aspect ratio. And we'll make our title. We'll just call it game for now. 
then monitor what monitor it's going to be set up on. Uh, we're just going to input null pointer, and so it'll go straight to the main monitor. And then share, I have no idea what that does, but we'll be putting a null pointer there anyways. Next, we're going to make context current, and what that will do is set up our window to the front of our, our UI or the operating system. So it's going to be what we're going to be interacting with immediately. So we'll set our window to context current. And then lastly, we want to, um, since we are initting our GLFW and this is a C slash C++ application, we're going to be dealing with memory management. And since we're creating something, we have to make sure we're deleting it. So let's go ahead and call GLFW terminate here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and run that. And what should happen is a window should pop up on the screen uh, very briefly and then close again and should input uh, hello world here since we're terminating. So what happens is is it emits the window is created and then it terminates the window almost immediately and prints hello world. Um, so that's kind of where we're at in the application right now. Uh, but we want for our application we want that window to be open constantly at least until we want it to be closed. So to do that, let's create a while loop here that loops infinitely while it's not closed. So to do that, we'll do the function window should close. And as long as the window shouldn't close, um, we are going to be like doing different window related applications. Uh, one particularly, um, how exactly uh, these, um, here, let me actually turn on the video again. So how exactly like the OpenGL renders uh, its, its sort of applications is they use a double buffer system. So everything is rendered to the back side of the buffer. So my, my right hand here and everything that's actually displayed is the front buffer. And every single frame, these buffers switch. So you're always rendering to the back buffer and always displaying with the front buffer. Um, that is to create the illusion so you're not like um, like rendering on the fly and seeing actually like pixels move and stuff like that, as that can be a bit daunting. But the function to achieve this illusion is glfw swap buffers. And we're going to be inputting our window here because that's the window we want to render to. And the next thing that we'll need to be calling is glfw pull events. And if you remember in the beginning of this in the video, oh, whoops, I need brackets here. Um, for like a window, events are kind of like if you move it around, you scale it, uh, minimize it, maximize it, close it. Those are all pullable events that we want to make sure we're tracking. So we have to make sure we call this in our while loop as well. So let's go ahead and run that and see what we have to interact with. And that is what I showed you at the beginning of the video. So now we have our own window that we can move around. I guess this is the debug as well. Um, minimize, maximize, and close. And then once we close, we get a nice little hello world message as well as just added bonus. All right, let me turn on the camera. Thank you guys so much for uh, for watching this uh, particular episode. I'm going to be done for today, unfortunately. And the next episode, we'll actually get to uh, rendering stuff on the screen, how exactly that works uh, using OpenGL. Let me delete Hello World because that's kind of nonsense. And um, kind of just going more in depth on, on different sort of topics. But thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope this was informative. Hope you enjoyed watching this. Hope everything was readable and I wasn't too slow of a typer. <laughs> All right. Goodbye.